So my own self-love is a very difficult thing. I'm, so, I'm still trying to work on that, right? Mm. Because I bought into the, I, the ugly idea yeah. of what I was treated was yeah. as a kid. Hi, and welcome back to the show. My name is Mark Roost, and in today's episode of The Unconventionalists, I sit down with the one and only Johnny Bang Riley. I was first introduced to Johnny via London Reel, and when I was invited by Brian Rose to attend the premiere of Ido Portal Just Move, a full feature documentary that's gonna be now available on London Reel's website, I got the chance to bump into Johnny. And I told him that his poem, Dear Brother, actually made me tear up. And if you hear Johnny's story, it's a story of incredible adversity overcame by one man who managed to go from curse to blessed in his own words. And we managed to sit down today in Camden as I went to visit him and his coconut stool. And we sat down beneath train tracks and it was just one of the most real raw experiences, just putting a camera down, recording with the microphones, and I didn't let the technical aspect of not being able to film get in the way, and I just wanted to capture this and share this with you. So, without further ado, I give you Johnny Bang Riley, and after this episode, make sure to go and check him out on YouTube, on Vimeo, online, share some love, give him some love, the man deserves it. You said that so when someone tried to grab you, or they find his air. And I want to hear about movement, because I know movement's a big, big part of your life, big part of your journey, big part of your transformation. It's a big part of, it's essential. It's yeah. a big part of, you can, you know, you think, you've co I copy all these words from other people, right, to, uh, to understand, because of our stupid egos, we want to understand what we're doing as well. Yeah. So, so we use these words, I fight. Yeah. Yeah, I move. Yeah. Yeah. Your lymphatic system, in order to take the sewage out, when the sewage is out, there's no issues. When there's no issues, there's potential, possibility, art happens, right? <laughs> it doesn't have a pump system like blood. The pump system for the sewage system is movement. You've got to move. Yeah. So there's a thing that you can do and move your arms out like this that creates a particular, and they, they call that fighting. Yeah. I move in a particular manner, if my life is threatened, I'm not thinking about hurting the person, mm. I'm thinking about a set of movements. When I finish those set of movements, somebody's unconscious or their spirit's broken. Mm. And when I was younger, people said to me, oh, you're really violent. But a, an educated fight choreographer <laughs> uh, said to me, you're, you're very merciful fighter mm. I was like why he said because you only want to break the spirit that wants to hurt you mm. you don't want to hurt the person well, you, so you if their spirit is strong yeah. then they take more damage yeah but you, you talked about this in a previous conversation where you talked about um, it was a need to feel safe the person needed to either be asleep or dead I think was the word my whole anatomy used. doesn't mm. want to be disturbed I'm here to live yeah I'm a living organism it doesn't want to be stopped mm. It knows it's going to die. The art of dying. Yeah. It knows it's going to die. So who are you to stop my collecting of life? Mm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not an aggressive person. I'm a, I'm a person that loves to live. You'll feel that love with my shin or my elbow if you try to stop that. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm very passionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's um um something that really struck me, which is when you were talking about your journey. I think it was in the documentary you posted on your Vimeo channel, around the behind the scenes of uh, Carved and Mayhem. Yeah, when your journey to New to New York, I think I believe, um, and you basically talked about how you had thought or imagined or at least believed that you wanted to kill someone, and that yeah. something helped and something prevented you from becoming that man yeah back to the lymphatic system i was constantly obsessing about this person mm. that was making me cortisol based because of the <laughs> thoughts yeah right adrenal and my system said to me if you keep thinking like this you're going to hurt us really really badly and we've got things we want you to do <laughs> this is me now making my system into a cartoon talking right yeah, yeah, yeah. so either you stop these thoughts which i couldn't or you take the person off the planet that's causing us this distress. 
but there was a few people that knew that I had a problem with this person. So if I touched him up <laughs> at the time, yeah, I would have been a, a suspect. So I had this idea to leave it for about three years. So there's more and more people come in and out of his life. And then I would move in and take his life. You know what I mean? Mm. And during the process, I find it very, I find it difficult to wait because of hate. Mm. Right? So I did the route of dull, dumbing, dulling myself, yeah. drinking and Addiction, smoking yeah. and all of these type of things. And then I was ruining the weapon I needed to kill him with. <laughs> so then I decided, okay, I need to learn to meditate then to wait. And then the lymphatic... But how did, th how did that come? That, that's what I'm interested in. When I was hearing this story, it's like, how did you suddenly come across with the idea that I'm going to meditate or I'm going to try this out? Was it someone that told I mean, you that? You know, was it? You know, you, you, a lot of people are meditating. It's, it's like in, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? People meditate. People fucking do yoga. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and MMA. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, all of these stuff we calm down all right so i just thought let me do that calming down shit all right and then my lymphatic system said oh this is where we should be because obviously everything changed so then i was thinking about about this person and, and, and the hatred kept triggering me to meditate <laughs> and the hatred was around so often i was meditating all the time <laughs> all right and it's something i never did before so it was like the mayhem carve the new lifestyle and then i just like my life is actually getting enriched during this process and then i was like you know what i'm so busy feeling good fuck you man yeah i just left it is that the process that you w you wanted to make your mean heart stronger but it instead you found love yeah of course yeah 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 because because and then you yeah. know you i've got kids yeah so at the time, I wasn't even relating to my children because I needed to, because I was, I was like, I don't want to get too connected because I might do 50 years. Yeah. I think 25 years in, in prison or something. <laughs> For people listening, we're actually sitting underneath a train track, which is uh, rather remarkable. <laughs> so yeah, you have, so you've got kids. Yeah, and then, then like, I, I had this, this little girl. See, initially, I had a, a little girl, and I called her Iman, and she was... You have, you know, you have children. There's always one that's for some reason that just you connect with. Mm. And I think she really was my my whole my my life. And then me and her mother didn't get along because I had some behavioural problems that they call bipolar. Yeah, it's gonna be very difficult for people to live with. Yeah, it's like Jekyll and Hyde, you know. Sure. And obviously, the woman had had enough self-esteem and uh, enough smarts to understand if to bring children up in that environment, it's not good for them. So sure. she did the right thing mm. and took them away. So I had that anger and that, and you know, I wanted to spill it out on this other character that was pissing yeah. me off. So the uh, the, the curse story again, that, that the story yeah, that you said about yeah. you thought it was, yeah. So and then I had another child, and I named her after the other child that I lost, mm. Iman. And I'm going to see those children that I haven't seen in eight years on the 5th of August. Wow. You know, so it's great when you change what's inside, everything else outside changes. You know what I mean? I'm really glad I'm busy, otherwise I wouldn't be able to sleep. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah? Wow. How do you yeah. feel? <sighs> yeah. Blessed. Mm. You know what I mean? It's going to be a great day. Yeah. Shut up. Wow. So... Then I had this other, other Iman who was just like this bag of energy and this great personality. And I've never seen somebody, if I just leave to go for a bike ride, who's like, I'm going to miss you. And the <laughs> tears roll down her face. And I'm like, man. And I'm going to put myself in a situation to go to jail and break her heart. Wow. So my own self love is a very difficult thing. I'm, so, I'm still trying to work on that. All right. Mm because I bought into the I, the ugly idea yeah. of what I was treated was yeah. a, as a kid. But to love her, mm. that's my new heart. Yeah. That controls this anatomy. Mm. So there's an umbilical cord between. So I do stuff to make, that's my heart walking around in a four-year-old. Yeah. I've right. heard that metaphor being used by a few dads yeah. that I've spoken, yeah. So I address, address my world to make sure her heart is not hurt. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, y you know, if I if I I didn't know you 15 years ago, I didn't know you 20 years ago, um, but I saw you bump into a friend that you hadn't seen in 14 years, 
And I overheard say something like, something's changed about you, John. Like, your energy's changed. Yeah. And it's interesting because when I see you, there's this, um, there's this magnetic kind of energy of love that you have that people, when you see, when I see people embracing you and the way that you kind of embrace people, um, what's this new journey around love been like for you to discover what it is to love and to feel love? It's good for them. It's when good I for you? hug somebody, yeah. and yeah, it's good yeah. for me, but it's, be, it's good for me as soon as I have the intention. Mm. When I hug somebody, it's like I was, I was hugging Idu. Yeah. And Idu started tapping me on the back. <laughs> And you held on. I held on. Yeah. Until he let go. Yeah. Yeah. People do that though. Yeah. People do tap. No, I, I, I'll even do this and yeah, I, won't yeah. I won't let them go. Yeah, yeah. Until they Ease into sink yeah. into your body. And then serotonin, dopamine hopefully starts to be released. The two hormones that start the kidneys. Yeah. So I'm fighting these shareholders and these corporations they don't give a shit about how they're polluting us and our children I have the tendency to do some nasty shit but instead I deal with the people and every person I deal with like when you come to my coconut store for at least an hour afterwards your kidneys are being flushed by the coconuts <laughs> I've sold you and that's my rebellion and that's how I fight them Yeah, you're not going to have my people 24 hours a day polluted we're going to give them some breaks. And it could be through my poetry, through my hug, or through my food. So you're not a poet, but you can call it your poetry. Explain that. How does that work? Because well, I'm talking to an audience that understands a particular type of okay. language. You know what I mean? So I'm just making it easier. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. we'll be sitting under this bridge all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, th and, th and that's the other thing. I want to know your secret. You know, like, you're one of my inspirations. You're, like, you're 53 this yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. You look like the vitality that you have, the energy you have, then your physicality... Looks like a, I don't know, no, even 16-year-olds aren't even that yeah. in shape anymore. Um, Charlie, what's your secret? I don't know what my secret is. Mm. I'm just a, a passenger. I'm amazed by what the little guy in me that says, that says I haven't had enough justice in my life yet. Mm. So we're going to do this. I want you to crawl around like a crocodile. <laughs> and I want you to say these words, but I want you to flip them, make them all complicated. That little energy in me, I was like, okay, you're fun. <laughs> Give me another idea. Yeah, do this, do this, do this, yeah. do this, do this. And my kids love it. Mm. My dog loves it. Mm. Women love it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And that's it. And, and your all creativity all loves it. Yeah. And all I, all I do is just relax. I relax. I stay open. And then just go, where are we going to surf today? You know? And I'm not afraid of mm. wherever the hell I, I land. And I used to plan a lot of stuff. And, and I'm like, in the last month, I've been, I've been in like some place owned by the Earl of Gloucestershire where they only like the land is like people homeless. And it's like, I think it's about a hundred miles square. There's no house, one house, the house I was staying in. Mm. And they just breed deer to kill, right? <laughs> and pheasants. And that's it. Nobody can go there. But this particular group of people, they get this house. Yeah. And they put people there like me it's, it's no internet no nothing and then he bring kids that have been abused and stuff like that mm. to meet me right is this where I read somewhere that he first taught them how to fight and then how to care what's that I don't know I saw a tweet that was mentioning that you helped some kids farm yarn is it something like that farm yes right yeah yeah, 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 I yeah, yeah and yeah. it said he first taught them how to fight and then how to care I never saw that yeah. is that what they said yeah 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 alright cool yeah so yeah. that was the process you know we've got these little guys coming there being tough guys punching each other in the head, throwing apples at each other, and I just sat there and watched them. Mm. Because young gorillas play and the big gorillas don't get involved, they just sit back. Mm. And then uh, eventually they go, who are you? And I'm like, who are you? And I look back at them with the guy that they think they want to be. You know what I mean? Mm. I say, who are you? I said, what are we going to do? I said, no, what do you want to do? And now I'm challenging them. Mm. And they put their chest up and I said, I said let's fight. You want to fight? And they go, yeah. And then I just, <laughs> <laughs> just burn them out. So one, one kid hadn't lifted his eyes off the floor for about five months. Became my little brother instantly yeah. through movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I gave him a p position of authority. And I, I, I said, you have to teach that adult now. Mm. And it was like it was like watching a Xerox. Yeah. Look, you have to do it like this. You have to turn your hips over. And it was like, wow. I, was, I love him, Daniel. Yeah. 
Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, it's, it, it, like you light up when you talk about, um, you know, movement, when you talk about what it does, the impact on bodies. Um, and there's there's also something that um, you talk a lot about, like, is it MCM? Is that what it is? Like magnesium. MCM, yeah. For people who have, like me who had no idea about it until I, I came across you. <laughs> yeah. Why is that someone that's something people should know about? Absorption. It's, uh, it allows you... A lot of our guts are messed up from GMOs and, and like gluten and all that. It separates the guts and stuff leaks out and we can't absorb energy. So people are taking stimulants and drinking and doing coke and all of these type of things. Mm. And there's, there's little tricks, you, hacks you can do to make sure that you don't need to do these things to feel alive. So, you know, there's a process that I go through. The first thing I do is I de decontaminate in the morning yeah. because it's byproducts of what I've eaten during the day. It doesn't matter what it is. Even the fruit is hybrid, you know what I mean? Mm. Because it's supposed to be tart for a reason. But it's, uh, you know, th these bitter things and whatever. You can imagine the parasites. If you don't like it, the parasites don't like it. They like sweet. Candida likes sweet shit. So all the fruit we eat, it's like, it's like eating s shit. It's like eating sugar. It's rubbish. I try to go on a fruitarian diet and I got fat mm. because it was too much sugar for my liver. My liver was just going, this is weird fruit. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's supposed to be. So if I, d if, if I walk past a blackberry bush, I'm eating everything on it. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if I get the raw I can get it, is the, is the better. You know what I mean? But do, do you think that it also gets really complicated for people? When you look outside in terms of like the research information, they're always contradicting each other about like what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat. That's why somebody like me at 53 years old has to look like what he eats. And it's not complicated anymore. So how do you make it simple? There was a lot of trial and error, but the real simplicity is this. right? You can bring a doctor in a white coat with a prop belly and he'll tell you blah, 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 blah. Or bring some vegan with a prop belly and dusty looking hair and yellow eyes, right, and a bad temper, right, and you can do all of that stuff. And then you can look at people like me, who are ripped all year round, yeah, and calm and open, do you know what I mean? And you go, you are what you eat. It's like, Idu said to me, have you ever done a, a hair follicle test? I was like, there was no hair follicle test in the jungle, homie. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's instinct is about the way you feel. It's about the clarity <laughs> of your eyes, and yeah. it's about you know I mean, how you flow through life. Mm. You know what I mean? So I can't tell anybody what's right and what's wrong. We've all got different gut flora that needs different things, right? Yeah. You, we're not different. Our bacteria is different, mm. right? Your bacteria may need something because you've been polluted in different ways, been through different things, different acid, different DNA. You know what I mean? So uh, what, I, what my diet does, my fl my guts love it. Mm. So then I, you know, if you look at a person, I may give you standard stuff that I do about sure. the decontamination. I don't believe in probiotics because I don't know where those probiotics have, have been, been what they've been through. And, yeah. and then they may, it's like taking somebody else's liver. You're going to pick up the characteristics of that person, hmm. right? But I believe in prebiotics, which is feeding yeah. what you've already got. Yeah. I believe in that. I had another, uh, I had like a movement guy who came on the show and he was telling me all about a fecal transplant. Have you heard about that? No. Basically, so you take... Um, Doo-doo transplant? Yeah. Literally, okay. you, ta you, take, you take someone who's got a healthy gut <laughs> 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 and, you ch and you take that and you transplant it into your own gut. I mean, there's a whole system and all that yeah. stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty out there. Um, is he selling a book? No. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no, 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 he's, uh, it, 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 he, he, on the show, he told me about it. I don't think he's done it, but, but um, a lot of this stuff these days is for clickbait. You know, the more, the more, more outrageous is the more clicks. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you have to sift through all that shit. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not too much into this innovative, all this new, new shit because. Go back to basics. Well, there is a set of people that are on this planet that didn't have all of this technology and all these weird ideas and. It was just them and their little huts and predators and prey. And they got it right to create all of us. They were tough enough and strong yeah. enough to make billions of people. Billions. They didn't live long, very long. Doesn't matter. But they lived. But they made us. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, ma it, doesn't, it doesn't matter about how long you live. It matters about the quality of your life. And I guarantee you they were more dynamic than we are. A hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? A hundred percent. 
There's a, we, and I know we're coming running out of time, so I'm looking sure. at the time. Uh, there's a question I really want to ask you, which is I think one of my favorite lines that you wrote is, um, I relax my spine in the quiet of the divine. Right, yeah. I absolutely love that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Someone just ran past <laughs> and, <laughs> and waved at Johnny and said, I love you. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, tell me about that sentence and tell me if it has anything to do with learning to trust. The divine, you know, when you... There's this word that... I was reading this book about addiction, right? Mm. And in the in the book, the one word that kept coming up as a remedy to everything about... Because addiction is is caused not so much about the drug as it has power. You want to alter the brain hmm. state. The brain chemicals. State. And so yeah. you don't care what you're taking as long as it alters yeah. your state. Yeah. But we see reverent. And that state is usually something that's uncomfortable for the body. Mm. And the body's just run out of ideas and it has a desperate measure. It just tries to just alter the mind state. right? Get away from these thoughts. But reverence, just to revere things. Do you know what I mean? Just look at things, try to look at things in real detail. Smell them, taste them, feel them, right? And count blessings. Nobody met Van Gogh. But you can look at the, 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 the you look up close at the painting, look at the brush strokes, and you can get a feel of his movement and his mood. Mm. So you use an extra sensory perception to get from the artist's work what the artist is like, from the music that they've written, what state were they in when they wrote that, from the book that they've written, where are they at? So every piece of art is a biography of the artist. They try to make it uh, general, <laughs> you know, this love song, <laughs> are you, I, I really miss you, I really love you. Yeah, but that's the person. Ri sing a love song to yourself, and it's what you need. I miss you, mm. I really want to be around you. Everybody's looking to get somebody else, but it's you that you should be attentive to. Yeah. You can't love somebody until you love yourself. Now you're healthy, you can love, you'll be a great lover. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So I just started looking at the artist's works, especially in children and movement, in the movement of my dog and everything. Skin, eyes, voice tones. And, um, you know, I, I try to do as much as possible. But the more you learn it, the more... You know there's more to absorb. More. Yeah. Every cloud is different. Mm. It moves at a different speed. Do you know what I mean? But it's like this constant music and film going on in detail all around me, right? And then I get an extra sensory perception of what created that. Hmm. And it's all put here for us hmm. to manage being us. <laughs> so I just surround it with love, hmm. period. If I could give you the um, boards on Piccadilly Circus, you know, those big electric yeah. boards, and you could write a message and everybody would see that message walking around London, what would that message be? Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Smile. Yeah, I like that. Um, Johnny, what does it being unconventional mean to you? Unconventional? I have no idea, man. Convention sometimes is good. We have an anatomy that likes to flow in a certain way. Do you know what I mean? your anatomy if to walk there's a, there's a comfortable way that we move a conventional way that's good for our health being unconventional in another way is a form of therapy where you can dislocate and pull back in so it creates opportunity within the anatomy so in some ways uh, to be unconventional can bring more abilities to the body's movement like mm. it all says it portal says that when you can dislocate and put it back without it snapping, that's real strength. <laughs> yeah. Right? So it's friends if a police officer wants to arrest me and they do their stand to put your hand behind the back, I'm slipping out of that easy, man. <laughs> 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 but if you're calcified as a person and you haven't moved, he can control you. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the nice thing is because I've changed my attitude, we'll never get the opportunity to do that to me. Yeah. Unless I'm in America and playing with a water gun then things change. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what's what's one thing most people don't know about you? My ability to kill them. Because mm. it's not going to happen. 
<laughs> and on that on that note, I would I want to I want to say thank you for for coming on such a notice on the, on the show. I appreciate it. And um and the, the one of the last things I want to leave people with is actually the word that you just pronounced us. Um cuz I I was one of the I originally thought it was usu when I didn't read it on yeah, the website yeah, then yeah. I saw your videos and I saw the content and I've got to give it to you mate. There's the um, I don't want to say the branding cuz that's not the right word. The uh the DNA of what us stands for sure. perspires across all your video content, all the all the message you put out there. But for someone who's uneducated who hasn't ever heard of us before, how do you explain us? You know when you feel fear mm. and you think because of the limitations that your parents or your school or your friends have put on you. And then you're put in a situation where your dogma says, Oh, we, we can't go beyond that. Mm. When you have a trainer and you trust them, your trainer says you get a beating yeah. and you go back to the corner and you say, I think I, I can't breathe. I think I'm going to quit. And your trainer goes, you've done, you've done, you've been through worse than the gym. Yeah. And he's got that minute to talk to you, that mm. beautiful mm. poet of self-esteem. Sure. And you look in his eyes and you go, believe me, <laughs> I've been through more than you and this guy's nothing. Mm. And what you do, you say to your whole body, do not disagree. <laughs> and you go and you, you jump. Yeah. And you may not, win the next round but you'll be further than what you were than quitting <laughs> you know what I mean you went out for yeah. another round and when you came back to the to the stool you were one guy when you got off that stool and you did something that you went beyond that part that you never did before even a millimeter you've become a different guy mm. now you use that guy to take the next step and mm. you're a different guy you're the guy that took 11 steps mm. the guy that takes 11 steps will take 12 the guy that takes 12 you take 13, mm. the guy, and it's like that, step by step. Every time you step, you're a different person. Mm. You know what I mean? Us. Us. Johnny, you're a beautiful man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for your words. You made me cry. That's how I uh, came across your profile with the two brothers, the poem that you wrote. Dear brother. Uh, dear brother. Mm. Anybody listening to this, go and check out Johnny Bang Riley. Where's the best place to connect with you online? Johnny Bang Riley. Google it. <laughs> Johnny. Thank you so much. Genuine pleasure. Nice.